All right, folks, this is the WC, man. Backlash Review 2023. Bianca Belair wins. It seems like she could just beat the whole entire uh, damage control squad at the same time. I'm just, I, I don't know, man. I, I hate, like I, I like I said, I like Bianca Belair, but I'm just kind of over it, man. Turn the girl heel. Just, just turn the girl heel already. Next up, you got Seth Rollins, who beats almost in the most random build-up to a match I probably ever witnessed. Um, the crowd of Puerto Rico, before I go on any further, these guys, man, these guys and girls and people, they made this pay-per-view just amazing. I'm probably going to say it um, again. Like, without this Puerto Rico crowd, this, this pay-per-view is probably maybe a 7.5, but when you watch it, surround sound, I mean, it's like literally a nine-level pay-per-view with the with the crowd. And this, the, I don't think that there was how many championship matches were there? What one? I think for sure, no two. It was two championship matches. The two female uh, championships was on the line tonight, but they were just on point basically the whole entire match. This match right here was just. I mean, they did the super move, the super stomp from off the top rope. Um, Rollins goes over. Almost is just. I mean, it does like it, I guess it doesn't hurt him to lose at all. All right, I don't want to really start no arguments on YouTube or wherever I post this video, Reddit, wherever. Besides Dominic Mysterio, if you're talking about WWE pillars, Austin's theory is literally it, man. Like, he's definitely in that pillar conversation. And even though, like, the, the matches that he's having are not necessarily, like, five-star, even four-star, the guy's getting the job done. Um, Bobby Lashley doesn't need the United States Championship. Bronson Reed probably doesn't even. I, I think that Bronson Reed, I think that him having the championship would help him. Um, I don't know what their plans is with Austin Theory at all. I mean, you know, but I know that he's going to be a part of it. I'll say that much. And I'll, then I'm going to just move on. Once again, I must say that the Puerto Rico crowd, they really gave um, Zelina Vega her stars. Um, her roses, um, and she works pretty darn hard, man. I mean, like, it, this is one of the cool things about the WWE. Like, they just kind of do it right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's just something that they do right. They've done it with Drew and Cardiff. They did it with Sammy um, and, and Mahiro. Um, and it's just like, they're just doing this correctly, man. This, this I'm going to tell you like this. This is this this just kind of screams out Paul Levesque, bro. It just screams out him. Uh, at Triple H, it just screams out him, and this was a very touching moment to just see her get her championship match in front of her family, in front of that crowd. That crowd was on fire the whole entire night. It was it was very poetic to watch. It was a really great moment, and I actually enjoyed watching the match. I mean, you know, with Rhea Ripley winning the match, I mean, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it doesn't matter if she wins or not. I don't think it does. There's usually a lot of talk. Let me say that, let me say it in this segment right here. There's usually a lot of talk about like celebrities and other folks, and the WWE have been guilty of this in the past, of them just kind of coming in and people not really giving a crap about them. And it's clearly not the case with Bad Bunny. The guy works hard. Same thing with Logan Paul. I know that people don't like Logan Paul. Logan Paul is one of the best. <laughs> He's like one of the best pure athletes that they have. Like, that's like no joke. I'm not joking or lying about it. The guy is a natural athlete. He could probably pick up a baseball bat and hit a home run in a, a professional game tomorrow if he really needed to. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's not me jock riding or nothing. It's just, just, it's just that you know. And this guy just... Same thing with Bunny, man. The guy's just got it in his blood. It's in his blood. Um, and he's worked really hard. The crowd, the Puerto Rico crowd, was on fire during this match. He came, as soon as the song hit, they were just on every single note. They were behind him the whole match. Damian Priest protected him. The run-ins with Mysterio, Vega, the LWO, Carlito made a, um, a guest star appearance. Um, all that stuff is fine. That's professional wrestling. So, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I can't get mad at that. Um, it's professional wrestling. It was well done. Um, you can tell that they prepared for this for months. This was like months in the making, probably years in the making. Um, and it was very entertaining. The crowd, the like I said, the crowd made this match way, 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 way better than what it probably was. And like I said, I, I'll just keep giving them credit. 
I mean, the Usos and Solo won this match, but it's like, you know, um, I'm, I'm not going to call it a throwaway six tag, six man tag. It doesn't hurt um, Sammy and uh, it doesn't hurt any of those guys. None of these guys are hurt by the results of this match. What the really big story is is it is what their bloodline is going to do. Are they are they going to implode? This is the end of the storyline. Um, everybody's still on SmackDown, so we're going to see that play out. Um, so I'm just I'm not saying that this is a throwaway match. It's like it's more. It's like a how can I say? It? How can I explain? It? It's like a match to further a storyline. It's not necessarily something that's like the climax of a storyline, which. Ultimately, it's probably going to be the breakup of the bloodline. That's probably what this is leading to. Okay, finally, you got Brock versus Cody. I might clip this into like a short or something. So just beware of that. Like, so how can you make Cody Rose look weak and strong at the same time? Hmm. You put him in a match with Brock Lesnar where he just kind of gets thrown around a bunch of times like a crash dummy. And then he gets like this weird looking pin similar to John Cena in what 2014, something that Cole made reference to in the middle of the match and still win the match, even though he got his ass totally kicked the whole entire match. And technically it's momentum, but it, it just kind of it's, it doesn't make Cody look strong. It doesn't make him look weak. It doesn't make Brock look strong. Doesn't make him weak. I don't know what they're going to do with that big ass um, uh, WWE Championship, uh, World Heavyweight Championship uh, belt that they're going to bring in there. Don't know. I kind of don't care at this point. <laughs> I, I hate to I hate to laugh in the middle of this. I kind of don't care in the middle. Of, you know, like it's just like this main event was just like, ugh. It's like it's almost like it's almost like WWE creative was like, hmm, how can we? Put Cody over without making Brock look strong, without making Brock look too weak, and without making Cody look too strong or too weak. Oh, we're going to have Brock put like a submission Kamora lock hold on Cody and then just have him roll him up. Just have him roll him up. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to go ahead and do that. And then, you know, you know everybody's going to sit there and they're going to be looking around. We're going to have uh, Brock uh, bleed. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just... It just it just makes you scratch your head. What was the purpose of this whole storyline? Brock didn't even explain why he beat up Cody Rose to begin with. Like, it's just, he like, oh, he just he just beat him up. Like, you just had to piece the, piece the things that, what is it called? The puzzle together. And he can't fight Reigns anymore. They're putting out a brand new belt. So he's going to attack Cody because Cody's the front runner for the new belt, right? So you just got to piece that together. We're not going to have Brock say nothing. This is what the creative team is like. I, like I said, I don't know if Vince is in control of this anymore. I don't know if Trips or Paul Levesque, whatever you want to call him, is in, is, is in charge of this anymore. This is just, this is 50, this is 50, 50 booking at its worst. All right. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's so bad. All right. It, may, it doesn't make Cody look good at all. It doesn't make Brock look good at all. This was just a lose-lose result. It was a lose-lose match. Nobody looked strong in this. Nobody. At all. Nobody. Nothing looks good here. No one looks strong after this result of this match. Nothing. No matter what they do on Monday Night Raw. There is nobody here that looks strong. Nobody. Nobody. Only thing that's strong here is Brock's facial expression. That's it. Where's the WC, man? I'm gone, man. Overall, backlash, the crowd really made it, man. For real. I'll give it a solid 8 because of the crowd. Without the crowd, it's like a 7, 7.5 pay-per-view. For real. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to be real. The crowd really just really sucked you in. They just, they like if you watch Backlash back again on replay, watch it with surround sound, turn it up, turn it up loud, and let the people in Puerto Rico sing to you, serenade to you, talk to you, just move your emotions because they made this event with, like they gave it like at least a point five rating higher than what I probably was going to give it. So WC and my face looks just like Brock's. I'm gone.